And I believe we're good. All right. Um, so obviously we want to continue uh, on to part three of our journey. Um, I need to open up a few programs. But now that we have already had the review, um, right, doesn't mean that we can, can't can still work on our, our elevation, right, and get it ready for portfolio um, and things like that. So obviously we want to continue this conversation. Um, and really before we get started, I wanted to note also that um, it was previously scheduled that we want to see our first iterations by this Friday, right? Um, in fact, I believe I'm actually going to more open the floor on Friday, uh, sort of work in the computer lab. Um, so we're going to push that to Monday, right? So as our preliminary. And then, of course, our final will still be, of course, has to be um, the following Friday. <clears throat> so we'll basically continue on this journey. Um, and as you guys remember, we need two elevations. Hopefully the, you know, the first one's definitely the slower one. Um, usually is when it comes to the first time of, of running these programs. This is kind of where we ended last time. So I'm, I'm basically just going to continue, right? I already had a question, um, you know, I have see-through mullions and I don't know what to do. So essentially what we need to do, um, like I was saying before, we can either keep these lines or we can decide to not have them at all, right? We even have a line layer um, in which we could, you know, quite literally turn it off and turn it back on. Um, and we've already got considerably, you know, some realistic architecture going on. Now, I've made some mistakes, right? I, I probably need to fill some things in. Uh, but luckily, I have the line work to actually show some of those things and where I'm missing them. So the first thing that I'll start off in this tutorial is those mullion systems, right? Now, depending on the level of which I drew them, so I should have trimmed, I should have done some things to make this a little easier on myself. Um, however, we can also work backwards because we do have something, um, and it happens to be this glass layer, which happens to be the opposite of our mullion layers. So, I mean, there is a couple of avenues we can go. We can either get the opposite of this glass, or we can sit there and uh, manually grab uh, each of these mullions, right, or trace them out. Um, let's, let's go ahead and manually trace it out. Uh, we may have a situation to actually do both of these uh, per operations. Anyway, hopefully, um, uh, Charlie, actually, could you close that door? Um, I don't want it to distract the recording. Thank you, man. So, um, continuing on. Um, and I, you know, sometimes I forget which um, actual commands I went over and things like that. Um, but I did want to mention that, of course, you can use your ruler tool, so Command R or Control R. Another thing is to to make sure that you're in Essentials Classic. Now, mine is so old that it's not even classic anymore. Um, but if you're, you know, still getting this question of why can't I see all the tools um, that I normally would see, and you can't really see it on the projector right now, but of course, in the recording, you will. You have these series of options uh, of formatting of your tools, if you will. So usually if you can't find a tool, switch it right to Essentials Classic or at least Essentials. Um, that one I find to be most, most helpful. Correct. Yeah, you can kind of barely see it in that projector. Correct. Oh, yeah. And, and you may very well already be on it, right? So you're in a good spot. Um, but, you know, some people have been asking me, I don't have any tools when I open up Photoshop, and of course that's the dead, dead giveaway. Anyway, so continuing on to those mullions, uh, first thing I'm going to do is make a mullion layer. I don't want to actually make it in my metal siding layer, so I'm going to click outside of that and of course make a new one. Uh, let's call it mullions. So let's definitely get that system. And hopefully the conversation was making sense when I said, well, you can get the opposite of this. So. I'm going to turn off some things to make this a little easier to look at, right? Almost kind of back to where we, where we started. So what I meant by that was we could use our selection tool. I could use my lines as a guiding tool. No, it doesn't have to be perfect. I could zoom in a little bit more and of course make it more perfect. But if you guys know me and have ever heard my conversation about digital technology, is that in fact the more imperfections you put into this, the more realistic they look, right? And honestly, that's not easily achieved, um, especially when you're learning these programs and you're trying to, quote unquote, eliminate mistakes, right? That's definitely what they teach you in school is that you want to practice something and you want to practice it so well that you don't make mistakes. However, this isn't true for knowledge. In fact, knowledge comes from making mistakes, um, which is why it looks so good. 
in comparison. Join us, Carlos. Did you get down there? You're absolutely confused. Yeah. It's like, where is everybody? So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually selecting the whole piece, right? That way I can um, actually deselect some pieces. So I'll go to my magic wand tool, which is this or the number W. And essentially, I want to click on my line work because that's the framework that I want the boundary to, to pick up, right? So you'll notice um, if I actually hold um, shift, it shows a little plus sign. If I hold command or control, sorry, option um, or alt on Windows, um, it actually brings up a little minus sign. So I've selected the whole piece. So what I'm doing is actually minusing the windows. That way I can quote unquote get the mullions. So in my case, if I hold Alt and I click, I can re-get those windows. Now, it's kind of intu uh, weirdly intuitive, right? I'm clicking on something that I don't actually need. Um, again, because I want the opposite. Of course, the opposite here happens to be the mullions. So it takes a little bit of, I wouldn't say psychology, but it's, uh, it's clearly logic and uh, geometrical proofs that are uh, mostly commonly used in architecture. Right, so I have all of everything that isn't mullions, so what I need to do is click on selection, right click really anywhere, and select the inverse. Once I do that, did you guys see that happen? It sort of flashed a little bit, and what it is, if you zoom in, is now I have the mullions actually uh, highlighted. So you'll notice if I go to my mullions and I do a brush real quick just to kind of see what happened. Oh look, if I right click my tool works again. Again, I have no idea why this happens. Probably because I restarted my computer. Um, but let's go ahead and make sure, uh oh, right, I'm getting not the opposite of my mullions. So something happened. Let's, let's try that again. Uh, back to my selection tool. Perhaps select inverse didn't work, or maybe I actually had it right the first time. So let's select inverse again and brush on my mullions. So I'm, I am getting parts of it, right? I'm definitely still getting the mullion system. But like I said, this tool may not work for us, right? I, I don't just have mullions and I don't just have windows. But at the same time, watch this. It can also just be a layer, right? So again, I'm still getting my mullions, right? However, I am getting some of the metal siding that I've declared is metal siding too. I'm getting the doors even. Um, something that I eventually can cover anyway. Um, because, of course, once I put those mullions back behind metal siding, right, and I turn those things back on, now I have my mullions and my metal siding. Now, not everything is perfect, right? I do have these mullions in between, but honestly, I don't really mind them, right? It, it kind of sticks out pretty nicely to me. Um, so I'll go ahead and keep it that way and I'll deselect. Pretty strong mullions. I, I can turn on the rest of it, see how it compares with the rest of the object. I like to do this uh, pretty often. Um, if you guys have ever heard the term, an artist stands back from their painting, right? You can't just sit there all the time stuck in this little drawing. You do have to step back. And fortunately, digital architecture lets us step back. I remember actually giving a comment to Manny last time. His drawings looked really good from 30 feet away. Um, in fact, we could calculate what something would look like 30, 30 feet away. For instance, on the projector, I can make it true scale. I could see what it would be like if I pinned it up, for, for instance. In fact, we used to do this in our painting class. We'd get a projector and we, we'd fool our art teacher all the time and be like, man, how did you draw on your canvas so well? And, you know, we just stuck a projector onto it. Um, and then, then, of course, traced it on the canvas. Um, you know, fooled everybody. It's great. Um, but it was actually extremely useful uh, in terms of finding what scale worked. Anyway, we got the mullions. Um, let's, let's continue, right? Because obviously we lost some things um, and we will clearly need to remove some of that mullion, right? So uh, it looks like I already had a mullion system layer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. You know, just forgot about it last time. It's all right. I just don't want to get confused. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my glass, layer one, whatever that is metal siding, um, keep my line work on and we'll, we'll sort of hide the rest because essentially I want to want to get back in there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my mullions off and like you guys saw in my mullions I need to remove some of that space right 
even arguably the metal siding. So let's just actually remove that whole piece, right? I don't need it. However, I do need to remove it from the mullion layer. So I need to click mullions, E as an elephant for erase and get rid of it. So even though I accidentally did that last time and I'm accidentally getting rid of some of the mullions I have on there. So maybe that's not the best tool either. Um, so I'm trying to do actually a little bit of problem solving to, to show you where you might run into, right? So actually let's use my magic wand tool or W, right? Let's make sure I'm on line work. And again, click those windows, right? Because I, I just need the opposite of those windows. Got to get that little sliver. Of course, uh, back to selection tool, right click, select inverse, and back to my mullions. So that, again, all I'm doing is erasing here. Ah oh, man, I got the wrong one. However, it's actually kind of working, right? I do just need the, the inside pieces. Actually, I need the outside pieces, right? And I did accidentally get rid of my other mullions. So again, it doesn't work, and that's okay. Not everything that you do is going to work. However, the last thing I could do is just get it, right? So zoom in a little bit. You can either use your magic wand tool for this. What I prefer is honestly my lasso tool, a polygonal lasso tool, I should say. If you right click, there's actually different options. Again, polygonal is useful in architecture because we use a lot of straight lines. So I can even hold shift and make sure it's a straight line. And at the end of the day, worst comes to worst, I can always, always trace it. Right? Again, I can hold shift to add to my selection. So in my case, I just have to buckle down and manually trace um, the mullion system if I want it. If I double click, it'll close a section. Right? And again, just manually drawing those. Not a big deal, especially in this case where I only have three. So let's go ahead and brush those on my mullion system. Or uh, in our case, um, actually select the inverse and erase that other piece because we don't need this. Right, and in fact, it'll keep everything but that piece. I'm not really worried about my metal siding just because I know it's going to be covered with, of course, that metal siding. All I'm trying to do here is make sure that I get around my three little pieces. Because again, once I turn on that metal siding, right, is once I put that on there. So I st apparently still need to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. However, we do have our mullions now, right? Pretty thick, we can even turn them off, turn them back on, fairly nicely. If I did decide that I didn't want them in the floor, you know, easily erased, I would just select the floor itself, let's uh, highlight it, if, if you will, go to mullions and erase them. Right, so we could still technically do that. It does look pretty good on the outside ones. However, let's make these white just for the sake of tutorial. Right, we, we do have that ability to always erase parts of these layers. In fact, it looks it starts to look really funny when you turn off everything but that layer. And what's nice about that is you can actually see where it's going wrong. Right, for instance, you clearly see that I've got something going on here. If I wanted to be a perfectionist, I could fix it. Right. I could get a selection, I could get the other side of that selection, basically holding shift, right? However, I'm going to have to minus from that selection. So I have to hold alt, right? I don't want to accidentally get my others. And I can erase that, right? Again, if I wanted to be an absolute perfectionist, I could, right? That way, when I turn all these things back on, um, things start to make a little bit more sense. Now, um, it doesn't look like I got all of my metal siding, so even though I finished it last time, of course I can continue. Um, I'm gonna focus in on my metal siding now. Right? Turn off everything else. And basically just gonna zoom in a little bit and copy that. I mean, um, I could also grab my original file, right? But I'm gonna take this snippet piece, copy. I'm just gonna kinda hold on to it. Now the reason it's saying, hey, which one are you talking about is because it's in a group um, and I do need to select that metal siding, right? Copy, now it's copied that metal siding. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna need my line work because I do need to fill in basically this frame, right? Not too bad. 
Uh, let's go ahead and fill it in. So again, I think the magic wand is going to be easy on this one, right? That's basically a continuous box. If I click on line work and I click there, boom, got it. So when I press paste, I do want to paste back into my metal siding, right? I do want to keep those all together. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it. However, it doesn't come in with, um, apparently I accidentally copied my mullion layer. So again, this is why it's very important to select the correct one. And so let's take that piece. In fact, it's really a lot better to take in the original. So let's go ahead. I believe I have that. Yeah, metal siding. But just in case you didn't have the original, of course, you could use your own drawing. Let's get that a little bit better. And let's take a piece. Again, just selection tool, copy, and pasting it. Right. Command T or Control T to transform it. Right. Uh, maybe actually on this one, I'm going to make it vertical, right? That's a nice, nice, interesting little change. I could even go diagonal, but you know, that looks a little silly. I can hold shift to make sure it's a perfect degree. Right? And I can even stretch it a little bit because, uh, well, it's the same as uh, basically continuous. Right? Sorry, mine's flashing a little bit because I'm sharing the screen, essentially. But. Hopefully it doesn't come up in the recording. Uh, I'm going to get that at a little bit tighter scale. Let's say it was like a different metal, right? Let's say it was like you know, maybe that or why not? I'm going to copy it a few times. So I'm going to copy that whole layer, right? Paste it. What's really nice is I can just move it, line it up, paste it again, move it, line it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, again, imperfection is perfection. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use that line work. And this is what kind of gets me, is you can't even see those line work, but the computer can, right? So as long as I knew where it was, of course, I can always click on it. I need that piece, however. So I want to erase everything besides it. So select inverse and E as an elephant for erase and it needs a certain layer. So what it's telling me right now is, hey, this is not all one layer. So what I'm gonna do is actually put all mine together, merge those layers so that it's all metal siding, and erase it, right? Because I don't need the edge. Oh, don't accidentally wanna get rid of my previous one, right? Or that one. So I do need to be a little bit careful, at least in this situation that I've created. All right, so let's get the inside piece first. Then I can show you, of course, how to be a little bit more careful. There's really no trick to it. Essentially what we need to do is get a little bit smaller and be a little less hardness on that on that edge. All right, see how it fuzzes it up a little bit? Sometimes that fuzz is actually our friend. All right, so in my case, I'm not even going to try and get it there because I can make it perfect instead. Right, so in my case, I'm just trying to get it the best I can, make sure I got everything. And that looks pretty good for the metal side. Uh, let's get rid of this piece. Um, best way to get rid of this, select the inverse. Oh, actually the other way. Deselect it. Actually, I've already covered it and I've already merged it. And that's okay. You know, um, if I had to go back, what I could do is Fake it till I make it, right? Just take that piece, copy it, and fix it. Okay. Erase the little parts that I don't need. So in my case, this is actually part of metal siding. So I'd want to merge those as well. And erase that little piece. Going to have to get much smaller. Again, I could use uh, my lasso tool to make that a little bit more perfect. However, as you can imagine, once I zoom out, this will not even be there. You would never even know. However, I do need to fix some things because that's just bothering me. That's it's got to be fixed. So again, let's take that layer two, and it looks like it took the other one. So I got to make it back to lit metal siding. Sorry. And let's go ahead and copy that. There is actually a much easier way to copy something. So if you take, um, again, I just want it to be within this piece in this region. Uh, I don't necessarily have to do that, but 
it keeps it more perfect to me and keeps me from making mistakes. And I'll show you what I mean, because I'll hit S as in stamp tool. That's the tool it is, right? I'll hold Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows and select where I want to copy from. And then when I undo that, you'll see that it starts to be like, hey, do you mean paste this here, paste this there? It's essentially making a copy. So I'm going to make sure my pixels line up. Click, right? And it's done. Just fixed it. I know. It's like magic. It's so quick. All right, so we're at a good spot. Honestly, the windows are really starting to put, you know, kind of bug me. They're, they're so, uh, what's the word? Saturated, right? So let's actually fix these windows. Um, I didn't make a windows layer, did I? Hmm. And that's okay. We've got our mullions. Um, you know, these guys are part of our mullions. We'll have to fix that later, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and make this layer uh, glass slash windows. So let's go ahead and get that. Again, I want to go back to my line work because um, it's really easy to get things from there. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and use my magic wand tool and select everything that is the window. All right, so I'm going to hold shift, add to my selection. Could have swore I'd done this last time, but maybe I did that in Illustrator. Or maybe I didn't say it. I'm not sure. Quite all right, we can do it again. In our case, it's pretty easy. All we're clicking on is the blue elements. Right? Oh, want to get those inside elements. I think that's why I forgot them last time. Yeah, because I made it blue in Photoshop last time, didn't I? It's been a long weekend. Having a child and staying up for multiple hours for not architecture has been quite different. However, we have our window selected. Right? Pretty good. What I like about doing this, um, honestly, I kind of make a backup layer for myself. So I'll go to that glass window. And it really doesn't matter what I paint here. But in my case, let's go with a light blue, right? Something a little bit more glass-like. In fact, usually at San Antonio College, uh, we usually teach you guys that windows don't have a reflection, or sorry, only have a reflection. Windows don't actually have color, right? What they're doing is reflecting. So in my case, I'm gonna go with like a dark, dark blue. Just as that back, that back layer for it. I'm gonna go with a big hardness, right? Get all of it. I could go a lot bigger, I could save myself some time. But again, just getting all those glasses. And I can see which pieces I've missed. So let's go ahead and get those before I miss them. Go back to holding shift, adding to my selection. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Shift. Oh, that's why. Line work. It does have to be the actual one. So again, let's brush that again on my glass and windows. Perfect. Now, at least we have some windows. We've got some metal siding going on. Starting to really have some character, right? In fact, white mullions actually look pretty good in this case because that white mullion looks like sort of reflection. Uh, starts to look shiny, if you will. However, we could also just go to our mullions, right, and be like, oh, well, they're too black. Uh, I can go to adjustments, brightness, and actually change just the mullions, right? Maybe it's a light gray, maybe a little bit more contrast, maybe a little bit more lightness. You guys see what I did there? Didn't actually have to change the color or anything. I just changed the brightness of just the mullions to, to fit that window a little bit better. So again, a lot of artistry to this, uh, which is exactly why AI will never take our jobs, which is a good thing. The bad thing is, is we have to learn through experience. Um, so honestly, do what you think works, right? It looks like I did have a glass layer. I knew it. It's all right. We did it again just, just in case anybody needed it. Um, not to be redundant, but sometimes we do need that, that redoing. Let's go ahead and delete the other glass layer, though, because I don't need it. Um, and let's make that a little bit more realistic. In my case, I did say it was going to be the reflection. So in my case, it's probably going to reflect the sky. I could even take a picture of what would be across the street. So in y'all's case, what would be across the street? Did you guys actually go to that building? See that it's like sunk 15 feet under the ground? 
Did you guys see it? Did you see it? Next time you see it, notice that the entire uh, building is actually 15 feet below, below the ground. Anyway, fun fact. Anyway, um, yes, so the reflection in the glass, in our case, you could make it actually the building across the street with a bunch of trees and you could sort of manipulate that. Or in our case for this tutorial, let's go ahead and just take the sky that we've already produced. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and un check everything. I'm going to get another piece of this. I, you know, I don't want it to be an exact reflection. I don't want somebody to pick up and go, hmm, is this the exact same sky that you use? I kind of want to fool them a little bit. After all, we are looking at the other side of the sky. So in my case, I'm going to select a piece right here, right? Something familiar to the size of what I'm using in that glass. I don't want to manipulate it too much. Uh, copy, so Command C. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it again on my line work and my glass work in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and paste. It's going to look like it's doubling up, right, because one is more transparent than the other. And I'm basically just going to overlap these, right, right make sure that they're there. In fact, I'm going to Command T and transform it as well. So in that transform mode, I can right click and I can actually do some more things to it. Um, in my case, I'm going to flip it horizontally, right, to kind of get, again, the opposite. Did you guys see that switch? It sort of flipped it. Um, another thing I can do is flip it actually the other way. I could do, you know, all sorts of things. But I, I really like that lightness on the door. I think that's kind of a nice effect. Um, and you can start to imagine what these colors and things would do. Right? I'm going to actually make it a little bit bigger because if we know anything about the reflection of glass, it's not perfect. In fact, if you've ever looked at glass, it's kind of like, you know, it's got this like wave to it. Um, so you're kind of trying to make these things. It's also a little bit blurry, unless it's just the world's most Windex glass, um, which is not the case. Again, there is such thing as weathering and things like this. So another thing that we could do to this layer, and I'm going to call it sky reflection, because I don't want to lose that. Don't know why all my caps are on, but it's very architectural today. That's all right. Um, again, sky reflection. I'm going to put it closer to my glass. Uh, eventually, of course, I want it to be on top of that glass, right? So let's go ahead and turn everything off. Let's take that glass. And what's really nice is I don't have to select this over and over again. I can do my magic wand tool. I can honestly press anywhere, and it gets that selection for me. It's really nice. Let's watch it again. Deselect. Um, again, I can take my already traced glass windows, magic wand tool, and click anywhere. Boom, I've got it. All right, go back to my selection and select the inverse. And I can essentially erase everything around it. All right, so in my case, I, wanna, I don't want the sky reflection outside of the windows. So I need to, of course, erase it. Of course, much bigger, much harder. Oh, I got the wrong inverse. Happens a lot to me. Uh, when in doubt, just select the other. Right, so in my case, I want to get rid of everything that is not the window. So I know it looks like, oh my gosh, what is he doing? Absolutely nothing. Right. However, when I turn this glass window off, or even just switch, switch them around, ooh, right, I have a perfectly crisp window now. Now, I don't exactly want that. Right. Like I said, I'm going to fade that a little bit. Sorry, the sky reflection a little bit. Right, a little bit more realistic, a little fuzzier. In fact, I can go as far as to go to filter. I can go to noise, I can add some noise. In my case, I like to add a little bit of a blur, and it's a, a Garcinian blur, which is um, true of our atmosphere. If you ever do long distance photography, you'll notice that there's eventually goes out, it gets fuzzy, right? If you've ever looked at mountains in the distance, they're fuzzy, not because of just all the moisture in the air, but because your eyes can only see so far. Um, all optics, really great stuff. Anyway, I usually add about five megapixels and usually you can see a nice preview. Obviously, if it's too much, um, it's too much, right? Actually, right now, too much doesn't even look like too much. But again, uh, we don't have all the layers on. So I'm gonna add about 8.5 pixels worth. I'm gonna turn everything else on to see kind of what things are looking like. Right, and I've I've got some pretty photorealistic stuff. Now I would say the reflection is way too harsh. 
Uh, very colorful, might you add. That is, again, the crisp, the most crisp glass I've ever seen. And after all, it looks like it's competing with my mullions, right? So something needs to happen. Uh, probably just need to take down a little bit of my reflection. See how that's a little bit more subtle? A little bit better in that, in that regard. Not too bad. Of course, we need a strong horizontal line. Let's put it right underneath my curve. Right, I'm going to go ahead and use my tools for this. So my lasso tool. Of course, I can make a concrete layer. I can get that actual curve. I could do a lot of things. Let's make that a pretty thick line. So I'm making that line essentially manually by just making sure that it's straight. Double click to automatically close. And I'm going to make a new layer for it too, just in case I want to change it. Ground line, brush it. I would never use true black, but I get pretty close. Get myself that strong line, boom. Okay. Could even further crop it. Well, you know, that might be too much sky for me. Oh, and of course I used too much RAM. Well, that's unfortunate because none of that was saved. But quite all right because I was almost finished anyway. Let's see if it saved anything. Sometimes it helps me out. Oh, don't you just love the Mac? Don't you just wish Windows would ever do something like that? Uh, just because your program crashed. Um, so the way that works is essentially there's a, a backup memory file, which is why it takes so much RAM. Essentially, everything that you're doing in Photoshop is saved to your RAM, right? which is really nice. Um, however, if you want to do this in Windows, you have to manually set it to uh, basically max out your RAM. right? So just in case you do want that feature. However, I should always be Command S and saving anyway. right? And in fact, that's exactly what it brings up, an example recovered. Um, and again, honestly, a real life example of what happens all the time in architecture. As you guys know, we deal with some pretty large files. However, let's continue since we can um, and further uh, get this guy going. Because the last thing we really need is shadow. Now, it doesn't look like it got my ground line, and that's OK. I can make another ground line. Looks like it, it basically cut out right before. So again, let's let's get that ground line back. No, not a huge deal. Let's go ahead and brush it in. Not too bad. Um, I, I think it was the crop tool that that, that kind of uh, makes this thing panic sometimes. Um, I mean, a little disclaimer is I, I have a an eGPU at home, so every time that I unplug this computer, it freaks out a little bit because I have it set to, to run really hard. Uh, so when it's stuck in laptop mode, it, it's panicking, essentially. Just in case you wanted to know why my computer's crashing. Anyway, so the last thing we need is really shade and shadow. And from what we know about this, um, we know this is kind of just a tutorial design. So we don't really know how far pushed in or pushed out things are. However, the shade and shadow can begin to tell the user what's happening spatially. So in my case, I'm going to make up that this inner piece is actually popping out at us. So in order to do that, what is going to happen? Well, it's going to cast a shadow onto our architecture, right? Um, now, we don't need a model to, to figure that out. Um, in fact, as, as long as you've ever been out in the sun and looking at any object at 3 o'clock, um, it's got some shadow on it. Right, at least in the state of San Antonio uh, City. Sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and make a shadow layer. Typically, the shadow layer does go on the very top, though. Like I said, we're still going from moving, uh, basically making the back to the background to the foreground. So this is our most foreground, um, and I would say shadows is definitely that case. Shadows. Now I like to draw them um, by hand. Now, what's nice is, and I can go over this in uh, the Make 2D in Rhino, is we can produce shadows from our three-dimensional models, right? I mean, obviously, we can create the sun in Rhino, um, and we could do all of those calculations for us. Now, in this particular tutorial, I'm doing them manually, right? So again, on my shadows layer, on my polygonal tool, and essentially, I want to make it up. 
However, I do want to be consistent. So if I hold shift, it'll actually stay at a 45 or a 90 degree angle, right? So I'm going to take that 45. Of course, the more shadow I have, the more that's projecting out. So, mm, you know, let's say it's only projecting out maybe that far. Right, I can take the 45 here, right, and start to imagine that's 45. And boom, 45. I know, I make it look too easy. However, that's not my only shadow. Let's say actually the building itself, uh, maybe the entire facade is pushed back, only slightly, right? So let's add to that a little bit. Hold shift. And let's say that building is of course in front of it too. Perfect. Uh, let's see, any other shade and shadow I can think of? Probably the mullion system. Um, but there's a lot easier way for me to do that instead of actually just tracing that over and over again. Let's say this roof actually overhangs a little bit as well, right? Uh, you can't really see it yet, but let's say it does. So I'm going to add a little bit there. Let's say it overhangs a lot, actually. So again, 45 degree. I'm just going to fake it till I make it. Oh, I need a little bit more. I could do that, but I can add to my selection. But again, just faking it until I make it. Oh, actually the top won't be in shadow, just that bottom piece. That's okay. Perfect. So again, brush tool. And if you've ever really looked at shadows, they're not black. They're a really, 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 really strange violet. Right? They're kind of like this color, if you've ever looked. Right, I'm going to go a little bit darker, just because I'm going to add some transparency to it. So obviously I'm going to make it a little bit darker that way when it gets a little bit lighter, um, you know, it looks okay. So very dark purple. I'm going to make sure I'm on my shadows. B for brush tool and brush those in. All right? I kind of want to fade them a little bit. Did you guys see what I did there? So I take the hardness all the way down and I fade it a little bit. All right now it looks like I'm accidentally getting a little bit of extra stuff. Oh, wait. That's my other shadow. That's okay. But I'm kind of fading it in there a little bit. Not making it perfect, right? Because shadows, if you've ever looked at them, they're not really perfect. They're really fuzzy. So I'm going to kind of leave that fuzz in there. You see what I did there? Right? Kind of leaving that fuzz just a little bit in there. Again, those mistakes are what make it look eventually perfect. So I'm going to deselect. Right? I'm going to take my shadows down just a tad. Because I do just want it to be an overall effect. Right? And I could decide, oh, you know, I want them a little darker, I want them a little lighter. But now there's no question that thing pops out. Right? What do you think, Eskamia? Shadow? No shadow. Which one has depth? We could even go further, right? Now, I know this is sort of a fictitious situation, um, but let's continue with that, that logic, right? Let's say even the, the floor plates, these levels were coming out, and of course they would be, right? You wouldn't have metal on the same plane as glass. So I'm gonna add to my selection. Those would kind of double up, wouldn't they? Bake it till you make it, right? If you don't know, ask one of us. All right, those would double up a little bit. Uh, let's add a little bit more. Let's add that one at the bottom. Let's say that one came out a little bit more. How would we do that? Well, again, just extend it a little bit more. Push that on there. Not too bad. All right, we, we've definitely got some depth involved in this drawing now. Um, but again, I, I did say I could take the mullions as well, so uh, there is a lot easier way. I can take this mullion, I can make a copy of it. <laughs> all right. Why would I do all that work again? Right. When, of course, I can change the color of it. So again, I'll take that mullion, image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. And if I want it darker, of course, I can make it darker. So I'm going to make it a little closer to my shadows. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. 
Uh, which reminds me, um, I forgot to pass around the sign-in sheet for today. How's it going, Alex? Okay. Anybody got a pen? Thank you, thank you. Today is the 28th already. But yeah, last but not least, we do want to get those little mullions involved. Um, however, I don't need all of this. So let's isolate this real quick so it's a little easier to look at. Oh, got rid of the wrong, wrong one. And essentially, I do want to line those up, but I want to line them up in such a way where obviously it looks more like a casted shadow. So in my case, I'm going to line them up perfectly, and then I'm going to use the arrows themselves. So let's zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And again, I'm just making the shadow, right? So I'm going to take it across a little bit, just the thickness of that, right? And move it down a little bit. See what I did there? Sort of like a, the direction of that shadow. And essentially erase anything that I don't need. So again, E for eraser. And I'm going to get rid of the stuff I don't need, i.e. anything that's not a mullion. After all, this is just shadow. So I'm going to kind of add some imperfections because there would be imperfections in those shadows of the mullions. Right? I've already got some shade and shadow at the top anyway. Again, all I'm doing is controlling that shadow so I can get rid of the things that, of course, I don't want. So, of course, these objects, you know, they don't need those things necessarily. And once I turn everything back on, right, now I have a little bit of shade and shadow on my mullions. And I didn't have to draw all that over again, right? You hardly even notice uh, where it's not. Magic or what? The best part is, guys, we can do that in, what, 40 minutes? <laughs> and I say we because I'm talking about you in the future, right? There is no past, present, or future to me. You are in the now, right? Essentially, you've already learned this. You just haven't clicked yet, right? Um, that's just the way I look at reality. Anyway, hopefully this is simple enough to follow along. Really just looking for this level of detail. Um, this would be considered a B, right? Um, that you have these components like shade and shadow, line work, um, and some sort of materialization. At least the glass and at least one material, guys. Now, it doesn't have to be what you actually use in studio either, right? But it does need to be something realistic. I've had somebody like go, well, I, I want to put grass, and they, like, they literally put grass, and it looked absolutely awful. Um, do something at least realistic, and if you don't know, of course, ask me. Um, but again, what we're looking for by Monday is really at least one of these, right? Keep in mind by next Friday, we do need to have both yours for studio and the model that we had, um, or a second one of your studio, right? So you could do the back one. Right? You don't necessarily have to even do uh, the sample project, right? Um, Let's see, am I missing anything else? I think that will conclude the tutorial for today. Unless there are some um, specific questions that came up and you wrote down during the tutorial. Any at all, guys? Over Photoshop, maybe what to go over? We did do the mullions. It was a great question, though, right? And it's really made our drawing pop. But as you can see, guys, um, the more you keep track of your layers, the easier this process becomes. And uh, it's a lot more workable, too. You know, so for instance, if my studio professor came and was like, you know, I really don't like that metal material, um, I can turn everything on except that metal, right, and change that metal. In fact, I can even take everything else besides that metal and change it, right? And it, it's quite easy to change, right? So can't stress this enough. Don't worry, you could just literally draw it with no layers you could do everything perfectly but i don't recommend it right because as you guys know the only thing constant in this reality or in architecture for that matter is change right that is very constant 
Anyway, I will leave it there uh, for today and conclude today's recording.